Welcome, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. It's the uh, first meeting of the year for the Parks and Recreation Commission. And at this time, we'll call it to order. This is always a fun meeting, a lot, a lot of guests. So we're going to mix up our agenda a little bit to be respectful of our, our guest time. Uh, as always, we'll start with a prayer and pledge. And Gloria has agreed to lead us in okay. that. Okay, thank you. Happy New <coughs> Year. And as we begin a new decade, we're excited and want each of you to know on the commission how much we, we appreciate you. And I'm, I'm just reminded that we are to be joyful in hope and patient in uh, affliction. However, we are always to remember to be faithful in prayer. May we pray. Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives and in the life of our families and in the life of this great community and your purpose in it. We, we pray that you will lift our hearts and our eyes to seek your guidance first in everything that we think, do, and say. Grant us wisdom and compassion for others as stewards of this great community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Gloria. Well, this is always a fun meeting. Um, we've, the first item is uh, the presentation of the Murfreesboro Half Marathon donation checks, and Melinda and Miles are here to take it away. Hello. Well, second to race day, this is probably our next favorite day, is to make donations from the proceeds from the Murfreesboro Half Marathon, or as we affectionately call it, the middle half. Um, this year was our 13th year, and it felt almost like our first year because we had a totally new course that um, started and finished on Main Street near the square, and we saw a little bit more of uh, the beautiful MTSU campus. And I think the runners really appreciated it. They were off some of the, the roads and uh, more on the campus, and they really liked that. This year, our participants ranged in age from 14 to 81, and the winning time was one hour and five minutes and 33 seconds. And if you do the math, which I didn't, somebody else did it for me, um, that is about a five minute pace. That is fast. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so th these are some serious runners that show up. I, I can do that in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and this year we had 26 different states from around the country that were represented. So we're really proud to bring in people, not just from Murfreesboro, but from around the country. Um, we've had, over the past 13 years, we've made donations in the hundreds of thousands to different community groups, and we try to keep it local. A lot of the groups that receive donations help us out um, at the race, and on race day, and we could not do it without them. For example, the Rotary Club, Exchange Club, the Lions Club. We've got so many different groups that help us out. And today's donations, um, what we do after the dust settles, we take a look at some of the groups in town that um, could benefit from these donations that um, also helped out during the race or they they benefit runners throughout the year. And it also benefits some of their groups, um, some of their runners that they have in their group. <laughs> For example, our first recipient is Project Learn. Amelia, if y'all would like to come up and receive your check. Project Learn provides uh, sporting and recreational activities for their participants. <laughs> 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 
And if the recipients could afterwards uh, meet in the lobby after the next group, we'll uh, try to take a group picture. Our next recipient is Project FIT, and over 500 children in Murfreesboro have benefited from this program. Thank you. Our next recipient is the Rutherford County Track Club. And you'll have to tell me how many children benefit from your program. A uh, hundred, yes. Wow. We're trying to, keep, trying to keep our kids healthy. Next is Endure Athletics. We'll get the check to him. Oakland's Mansion. And uh, part of our course goes up to the house, up to the mansion, and the runners get to see uh, the beautiful grounds, and we appreciate uh, them allowing us to do that every year. Rutherford County Convention and Visitor Center. Every year, the runners um, converge <laughs> in their lobby to do our packet pickup, and it's uh, it's not cha it's organized chaos. And uh, I, I think it's a great place for, especially the people coming in from out of town, to see the first look at what our city has to offer. But we appreciate it. And of course, Main Street, Murfreesboro. <laughs> we really converge on Main Street. <laughs> and we appreciate all the businesses that, uh, that put up with us that day. BRAA and MTSU track. I know the first year Coach Hayes sat me down in his uh, in his golf cart and said, stop looking for trouble. They'll, if, they wanna, if they have a question, they'll come find you. <laughs> and his voice of reason, every year I think of that. So we appreciate Coach Hayes and MTSU. And the 100 Club. Bradley had his eyes frozen too. This organization provides funds for the families of police officers who have fallen. And we do appreciate our police department. On race day, they are rock stars. They keep our runners safe, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Murfreesboro Police Department. Okay, we'll get, get them the check. Last year, we were able to donate an electric bike that they could use for um, their special events and to uh, patrol the Greenway. And they always put the donation to good use. And lastly, Murfreesboro Parks and Rec. And again, we could not do the race without all of the, uh, the support from the Parks and Rec Department. Parks and Rec does all the heavy lifting, the, uh, the water stations, the cones and barrels. There are a lot of logistics that um, our committee, we're just not big enough or strong enough <laughs> to do those things. So we really appreciate everything that Parks and Rec does for the middle half. Does anybody um, want to sign up for next year? 
You don't have to do a five minute mile. <laughs> Rick's trying to break the record. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Melinda. Which, which is you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we appreciate uh, all you guys being here today and all you do to make the middle half possible. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, we've got one other item, then we're going to excuse our guests. Uh, this is a presentation of the 2020 Cultural Arts Laureates from Deb Hunter is going to do that for us. Good afternoon. Um, I'm honored to be here today to introduce the 2020 Murfreesboro Cultural Arts Laureates. The Cultural Arts Laureate program was founded with the intent to give experienced individual artists an opportunity to share their talents with our community, offer youth citizens and emerging artists role models within their own community, and to encourage and nurture the growing arts and creative culture in Murfreesboro. The desired outcomes of this initiative are that each year the selected laureates will use their creative practice to impact our community in a way that they find rewarding and continue to give them time after their term. And this program will encourage artists to set goals within their own community, that the community will be best served by the arts, and lives will be enriched by the work the laureates accomplish. I'd like to invite the 2020 laureates to the lectern for their introduction and our presentation. The 2020 Painter Laureate is Donna Magliacano. Donna is a multidiscipline artist who considers herself a visual storyteller and art adventurer. Through her art, she explores art processes and then combines those processes to tell a story, from traditional portraiture and painting to sculpting. Her work leans towards the whimsical and enchanting with often amusing storylines and lots of color. She has been an artist for over 45 years, but officially in full time for the past 12. Her work has earned a number of accolades, and she has been featured in multiple publications, including two volumes of the Northlight publications titled Insight, the Best of Mixed Media. Her work is collected internationally. Congratulations to our painter laureate, Donna Magliacone. The 2020 Photographer Laureate is Tommy Womack. Tommy is a freelance website designer. As he grew his business, he realized that a website needs attractive imagery, eye-catching photographs, video, and animation. This realization led him to pursue photography classes and spurned a new passion. His photography and web design business introduced him to 360 virtual imaging. This new way of capturing life has grown into a virtual library featuring local events and places. Tommy has captured several historic Murfreesboro community-wide events in a way that makes you feel that you're there in the middle of the action. Tommy's photography features a mixture of local landscapes and current events. Congratulations to our photographer laureate, Tommy Womack. The 2020 Poet Laureate is Amy Whittemore. Amy is the author of the poetry collection Glass Harvest. Her poems have won multiple awards, including a Dorothy Sargent Rosenberg Prize. And her poems and prose have appeared in the Gettysburg Review, Nashville Review, Smartest Pace, Pleiades, and elsewhere. She is the review's editors for the Southern Indiana Review and teaches English at Middle, Middle Tennessee State University. Congratulations to our Poet Laureate, Amy Whittemore. The 2020 Murfreesboro Cultural Arts Laureates are starting their year in the Community Gallery in the Washington Theater at Patterson Park. This first show features the artwork that has brought them to the title Laureate. Through the year, they will create new art in the name of Murfreesboro Laureate and collaborate on new projects. 
together, they have selected a theme for a laureate theme. And this year's theme is Eye to Eye, View from the Heart. The laureates look forward to harnessing their passion for community and the environment as they work on their laureate projects. Congratulations to the 2020 Murfreesboro Cultural Arts Laureates. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the city of Murfreesboro. We look forward to all the year has in store for you. Thanks, Deb, and congratulations to you guys. At this time, we'll uh, excuse our guests. Anybody that wants to stay is welcome, and we'll get into the regular part of our agenda here in just a second. next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting which was in November uh, those I think everybody got that via email and or packet this time we'll entertain any changes or corrections that need to be made and if there are none motion for approval move approval of the Thanks, minutes Laura. I'll second, second. I have a motion and a second any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed minutes are approved thank you Mitzi all right, Casey Neal has joined us today and is going to talk to us about some tennis tournament fees. Casey, welcome. Hi, I'm Casey Neal, the facility coordinator at the tennis complex. Um, what we're looking for today is to um, put some parameters on um, the tournaments that come to town, a little history on it. Right now, we don't have any written parameters on tournaments. They can have as many courts pretty much for as long as they're not already reserved for however long they want. Um, so the form that you've got in front of you kind of breaks down what we're um, proposing to do. Uh, we've got it divided by how many participants the tournaments would have. Um, for 150 participants or less, they would get all of the courts for one day and then the the way that we're divided up for people who haven't been there, there are 16 courts, the main courts, and then across the street there's eight more. Um, so they would get the 16 for two days. And then for 151 or more participants, they would get all of the courts for three days. And then if they wanted additional courts, you can see that we've got that listed out there too. Um, the fee per participant is not changing. We would leave that at $6. Um, and what this would do would just, it would allow us to host more tournaments, um, or not, they would host their tournaments, but that um, that way we could also have our own activities going on at the same time. Um, when tournaments come in and reserve all the courts for, you know, four or five days, it really limits us and the community to what we can do. Um, so this would just make the tournament directors more intentional when they're reserving the courts. If they don't need all 24 courts for so long, they wouldn't reserve that. Um, and then that way, if they're just using 16, we can use the other eight for leagues or local play or just recreational play for the community. Any questions? Do I have any questions for Casey about the proposal? So just the fees, so it's $6 a person. So if there's 100 participants, for two or three days, they're being charged 600 total dollars? Yes. For all three days? Yes, total for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, has that been in place for a long time? Has that been reevaluated any time? Um, it was actually $5 per, I believe it was $5. Yes, $5 um, before the complex was there, um, when it was just the outdoor 16 courts, or 24 courts. Um, when we opened the indoor facility, we raised it to $6. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty good deal. It sounds like a great deal. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm questioning um, it. We are a highly sought after facility in the South and we stay booked. I think I told somebody this morning, we're booked for some kind of activity starting March 1st, the first weekend in March through the whole spring and summer and through November. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, we, re we really like hosting these tournaments because um, they are revenue makers. Um, and that helps keep the cost down on other things, but we do want to balance that with, with opportunities for local play in the community. So 
we feel like this would give us an opportunity to have more of those tournaments if, if they can limit them to a smaller set of courts so that we could do both simultane simultaneously. Is $6 the typical fee? I mean, that's, I guess, maybe part of where I would go with this. Is it, if, if, if my kids were going to go play tennis in Chattanooga or Atlanta or Lexington? Well, now, we don't charge the individuals that. We charge the tournament director that. That kind of gets flowed through to the... I mean, you know, doesn't that typically flow through to the individual that, that signs up for the tournament somehow? Yeah, I mean, I, I would expect you, it would. You happen to know what is typical maybe in Chattanooga? Or, okay. No. I would I think, think it's... There would be something out there, but... I know a lot, lots of facilities are, are different from ours. They, um, some people charge for the courts. You know, they'll charge a head fee and a court fee. Um, okay. There's a lot of different ways people structure it. Yeah, I think... Uh, Councilman Lance, I think uh, what we'll do is if we can look at this as kind of a separate part and from this meeting we can take a look at that yeah. player fee okay. and evaluate that and really um, uh, evaluate that to other markets and see if that needs to be adjusted as well. But I think these are two separate policies that yeah. I think we can we can do that and I'm hearing you loud and clear that we can go out there and take a look at that fee as well. Okay. And I think, you know, it's a good idea. I think what you're trying to do as far as balancing, you know, just saying well they're all reserved for all three days and then you see a bunch of empty courts and we've had to run off people who want right. to come play you know this is a good idea so mm -hmm. uh, if there aren't any more questions i'll go on and make a motion okay is there a second second so we have a motion and a second any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed is approved thanks casey thank you Allison Davidson's with us today and uh, is going to talk about an addition to the Fit for Success program. Allison, welcome. Thank you. Um, just to give a little bit of background, we started the Fit for Success program in 2006 as a benefit for full time uh, Murfreesboro, City of Murfreesboro employees. And what that benefit is, is that they are allowed to purchase a pass to the facilities, Sportscom and or Patterson, and they pay the taxes on that, that fee. Instead of paying the full $200, two, 270 fee, they pay the taxes on that fee. In 2011, after several years of people asking for families to be added to, I'm sorry, in 2011, after the um, Several people had requested that the teachers at Murfreesboro City Schools be added to that program. We did add that to all of the, not the teachers, but all the employees for the Murfreesboro City Schools. Then in 2016, after lots of requests from our city employees to add family members, we added that addition to uh, the Murfreesboro City the uh, city employees, we allowed them to add their families and they pay the taxes on the family pass. And once we did that, we kind of wanted to kind of gauge how that was going to work for us and for the facilities to see if that would, if we would be able to add the teachers as well. So we've been tracking those numbers for the past few years, realize that it's really not going to negatively impact us administratively or the just the the usage so we would like to be able to add family members to the uh, city of murfreesboro school system as well to allow those employees to purchase a family pass by paying the taxes on it which is a, you know, a little right. confusing but we would like to add the families for the uh, city school system now it's a great idea any questions, Allison, on this? There are none. We need a motion for approval. Can, can, you, can you quote the, the price for the family membership? Well, the price for a family membership for her city city residents is four hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Now, the 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 um, individual wouldn't actually be paying that. They would pay the tax portion of that. So, and that's different for everybody. So I really can't tell you how much, if you were a teacher and you were paying for a city pass, I wouldn't be able to tell you how much that is. It's gonna be dependent on everybody's tax level in that regard. But you're paying 400, the taxes on the $450 benefit. Okay. Any other questions? 
I don't know. We need a motion for approval. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Thanks, Eddie. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Gloria. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Thanks, okay. Allison. Thank you. Brittany Garrett's with us to talk about scoreboard sponsorships. Brittany, welcome. Thank you for having me, council members. Um, we uh, recently purchased five new scoreboards at Starplex and one at McKnight. Uh, they have a feature now where we can actually do sponsorships on each side. Um, so 10 sponsorship total. I am here, um, the, our first option, they can do a year for $1,500 or two year agreement uh, for $2,500. That would, uh, that the payment would uh, cover their installation fee and design fee. Uh, basically, it's a decal that will go right on the side of the scoreboard. They send us what they want to put on the scoreboard. With this fund, uh, this will directly go back uh, to the ball field, so this will help offset any costs and improvements also. Um, in your packet, it actually has an example uh, of what uh, the uh, sponsorships would look like on the scoreboard. Any questions? Any questions? So it looks like there are uh, how many scoreboards? Five? There's five, so there's ten total possibilities. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. And I do have some businesses already itching to get on them to reach out to me. Any other questions? There are none. We need a motion for approval. I move to approve. Thanks, Tim. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Reed. <coughs> Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Brittany, when you're doing this, I, I, I didn't want to get in the way of what the work you've done so far, but um, when people come to you, I, I think we, that number may be able to go up in the future. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, we've we done some research and we <laughs> they were like $300 and $400. All right. Yeah. I, I assumed you probably researched and all yeah. that. I'm just kind of guessing for a full year with that yeah. much exposure, you, you could probably get that number yeah. up. So we, try not to go too long term on when you commit and talk to folks. Yeah, you, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd add to that. We had a discussion about that. We've looked at this for a couple of months down, looked across the board. Uh, we thought that number was a little bit low, but it is significantly more than what other communities charge on there. So what's uh, the what we're going to cost for the signs? What's the, the sign we're looking at six to uh, six to uh, 500 to 600 dollars. So that is the total design process and them installing it. Are you passing that along to the advertiser or is that coming out of their sponsorship? That's coming out of their sponsorship. So that when they pay, so basically we're making a thousand dollars off yeah. if we take everything out of the. Yeah, I think it's a good starting point, but I'm with Rick, you know, and I think Tim would agree. We've, we've all kind of done it at yeah. some of the school levels. Yeah. Um, on some of the scoreboards and things that some of the schools and, and I think you could probably get a little bit more and bake that into it. Okay. Absolutely. What, what we had discussed um, when we first considered it, we thought it was a little bit low. We're going to do it for a year and yeah. see what the market's it's like. It's a good starting point. Uh, and yeah. get, get started. And uh, Thomas and Brittany and I will look at it after the year and just see where we need to go yeah. from there. It's a great idea. Thank you, guys. Good work. Last but certainly not least, Kyle Goss is with us to uh, talk about pool lane usage by the Tennessee VA healthcare system. Kyle, welcome. Uh, I'm here today seeking approval for a partnership with the Tennessee Valley VA Healthcare System. One of the services they provide is physical therapy to our nation's veterans at the Alvin C. York facility in town. They want to begin to teach aquatic therapy classes, but they need access to a pool. We have identified non-peak times at the sports comp pool where we can provide that to them without impacting our regular customers or current programming. The partnership would come at no cost to the city since we already have lifeguards on duty at that time and we would limit the number of VA residents to conform to that schedule. Um, we would not be generating any revenue from this partnership as we would not be charging the veterans. Um, overall, we just feel this is a great way to impact the community and help out where we can. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. It's awesome. I'll move for approval. Thanks, Rick. Second. And a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks for doing this. Great idea. As always, we'll close our meeting with an uh, update from Melinda on upcoming program and activities. Welcome back. <laughs>
the um, technology is always my challenge here. Okay, we've got a lot going on, as usual. Uh, I just wanted to remind everyone about our buy one, get one free offer. Um, it ends this Saturday at 5 o'clock sharp, 5 p.m. Um, you can go to Sportscom or Patterson or the main office to um, sign up for the buy one, get one free. It is a bargain. It is absolutely a bargain. It's good for individual yearly and monthly passes at both Sportscom and Patterson. So you could go to Sportscom in the morning, go to Patterson in the afternoon, and go back to Sportscom at night and um, on that same facility pass. We've got our coffee marathon. And this is the kind of marathon that, that I can get into. <laughs> um, it's $25 a person. What you do, you go to one of eight different coffee shops, and they will stamp your passport um, once you run or walk the uh, particular route. And it's anywhere from three to six miles each time. You could do it on your own time. Um, you're, you don't have to meet with a group. You could do it separately. And at the end, you receive a really cool um, handmade mug that was created here by a local potter. And they, um, they are collectible items. The Women's Suffrage Educational Forum through Art and Discussion will be held at Bradley Academy Museum and Cultural Center Thursday, January 16th. Um, 100 years ago, women's right to vote was achieved through the national and local efforts of the National Women's Suffrage Association. We'll have a forum with a panel of women in our community's workforce having an open discussion, and we'll also have artists displaying their artwork, and light refreshments will be served at 6 to 8 p.m. on January 16th. Cannonsburg Village, we have a potluck lunch and learn, and on uh, Wednesday, January 15th, we'll learn how to help the outdoor four-legged and feathered creatures that are our friends. Um, and the participants will create a pine cone bird feeder. This is a potluck lunch, so the, your admission is to bring a dish. And then on Thursday, February 19th, um, we will learn about Victorian customs, and uh, we'll fo it will be followed by a creative project from the era. It's always very interesting to learn what, uh, what went on 100 years ago. The Murfreesboro City Schools African American Cultural Night. Um, we're partnering with the city schools to celebrate African American culture. Every year we involve city school students, art, authentic food, music, and an educational interactive performance about local history of African American culture. And it's for all ages. Thursday, January 23rd from 4 to 7 p.m. It's free at Patterson Park Community Center. <coughs> this is one that'll be a lot of fun. Um, beginner line dance class at Cannonsburg Village. The um, February 6th will be a free information class. You have to be 16 years or older, and the classes are approximately one and a half hours each. You get six classes for only $30 starting February 13th, or you can show up and just do an individual class at $10 each. It'll be at the JC Building at Cannonsburg um, on Front Street. Rick's instructing that one, isn't he? <laughs> only if you don't want your toes to get stomped. <laughs> Now, of course, we've got our summer camps. I know it is kind of early to think about summer, but, but not really. Um, a lot of the parents are already scheduling what to do with their kids when, when June gets here. Our registration begins Monday, March 2nd at 8 a.m. You can register online or in person. And we've got lots of information about the different camps online, on the website, and um, We've got everything from adventure camps, outdoor type things, to uh, Broadway theater camps. Something for everyone. 
Black History, Past, Present, and Future. Um, we will be celebrating the whole month of February with the culture and history of African Americans. During this event, we will have several displays of inventions created by African Americans. Also, you will be able to embrace the entire culture with music, authentic dishes, and history. It's uh, free for all ages, Saturday, fe <laughs> Saturday, February 1st, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Bradley Academy Museum. Of course, the outdoor Murfreesboro, even though it's, it's kind of cool outside, um, we've always got something going on at Outdoor Murfreesboro and the Wilderness Station from animal type um, programs. We've got hikes coming up and our homeschool winter science camp and our Cub Scout super science workshop. So you can contact the Wilderness Station or look in our Rec Connection for all the different programs available. Of course, athletics always has something going on. Uh, volleyball, racquetball, basketball, softball, and our very popular pickleball. St. Clair Senior Center will have an open house Thursday, January 23rd from 9.30 to 11 a.m. And that is free. If you've ever wondered about what goes on there, that, this is the perfect time to come and check it out. The instructors and facilitators will be able to tell you all about their programs and classes. There'll be displays, samples, and demonstrations, and um, some light snacks. It's always fun. It's for all ages, Thursday, January 23rd, 9.30 to 11 a.m., and it is free at the St. Clair Senior Center. Now, The Little Mermaid will, it, it's, in February, but um, there are auditions now going on for Disney's Frozen Junior. The audition dates are January 29th and 31st, and you can uh, contact the Perform Murfreesboro for audition packets. Of course, all of these and a lot more can be found in our Rec Connection program guide. They're at the different facilities and at different locations around town. You can also download it from the website at murfreesboro.tn.gov slash parks. And you can also find out more information on all of our many, many Facebook pages. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions for Melinda? Lots going on as always. A lot. Thank Thanks. you. All right, is there any other business to come before the commission? Being none, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thanks.